This right here is the Crossfire Sierra Squad gameplay trailer. Now I've been excited for this game for a long time. From the moment they announced it I thought, yes, this is the exact kind of VR FPS we need. It's a gap in the market and someone's finally plugging that gap. It presents itself as a chunky, cinematic, set piece laden, story driven FPS. That's certainly what I took away from all of the promotional materials. The announced trailer, the gameplay trailers, they've all presented this game in this way. And I walked away thinking, we're finally getting a Call of Duty campaign in VR. That's the vibe I took from these trailers. If not Call of Duty, then maybe Battlefield or Wolfenstein, the modern Wolfenstein games, or even Black on the PS2. Those are the vibes I got from all of the Crossfire Sierra Squad marketing materials. But that is not the game we've received. That is not the game that they have just released. Now I'm not saying that people won't enjoy this game, but I am saying that the marketing was somewhat deceptive and I was set up to believe this was a game that it really, really isn't. Crossfire Sierra Squad has much more in common with Time Crisis, House of the Dead, and Operation Wolf Returns than it does with a Call of Duty campaign. This is an arcade, light gun style shooter through and through. It's so close to being an on the rails shooter. The only thing it doesn't have is the on the rails element can freely walk your character around. This is a linear, mindless, and sadly, quite boring VR shooter. It's far from the cinematic game it's made to look in the trailers. Now I'm gonna cut now to me playing the game in the first mission and just listen to the bewilderment in my voice. I'm baffled, I'm confused, and I'm thinking that I've done something wrong. I've selected a mode that I shouldn't have because the experience is so arcadey and so far from what I thought we were going to get. Looks like, um, oh, it's a really weird thing to say, but it looks a bit like an arcade game, like something you'd play Jeez. literally in an arcade. On the, the player's like big Let's and chunky. Come on out. Deal is off. Hello? I am not selling. Just go away. All the guys from RPG. Marcus Vitell who they killed. Whoa. It's got some House of the Dead level writing and uh, voice acting. It does feel like an arcade Things shooter. Messed up. What? Raul, do you okay, I can't move through that. What? It's really arcadey. Oh. Can I turn that stuff off? I didn't expect this at all. support from the company. Don't worry about it now. Just give me the Nine one five. Five, zero, two. <laughs> oh, I can't go in here! Oh, oh, oh! I've got to be able to turn that stuff off, right? This is, this is not the, immediately not the game I thought it was going to be at all. Oh my. Uh, have I selected the wrong mode? Arcade normal. Am I on the wrong mode? I need to go back. This feels like it. This is. Uh, this isn't right, surely. Nah, I need to go back to the main menu. Display player HP at the top of the screen. Okay, that's already not in use. Subtitles are on. I don't really like that, but they're on. Um, controls. Nothing in there about the yellow lines on the floor. Gameplay. Subtitle, subtitles, HP bar, sound. I don't think you can get rid of this stuff, man. Why is there an arcade symbol there locked? That is confusing me. Okay, episode four on hard. No yellow lines, please. Looks kind of nice, but at the same time, it's also like lacking atmosphere. I'm realizing now, that, like nothing's moving. There's no breeze. Like the trees aren't moving. The cloth isn't moving. Oh, shut up, you. Cool sounding gun. Like, the audio's nice. The audio sounds good. This guy is doing nothing. Like, Team AI doing nothing. But then, you don't really need him. Even on hard, look. It ain't exactly difficult. Um, 
Now don't get me wrong, I love a light gun shooter and I love them even more in VR. We have some superb ones. Zombieland Headshot Fever is fantastic, one of my favourite VR games. Dead Second is absolutely superb and I hope it comes to PSVR 2 at some point. It's currently available on Quest and PC. I have no problem with light gun games, but Crossfire Sierra Squad in my opinion was never presented to us as that kind of arcadey shooter. If you look again at the gameplay trailer, none of the on-screen arcadey HUD elements are there. It's all stripped back, all cleaned up, all zoomed in. It looks far more cinematic, far more chunky. Then when you play the actual game, you've constantly got yellow lines on the floor pointing you to your next objective. Enemies have these big garish health bars and they take a lot of hits to go down. The enemies also don't really react to your shots. It's only the killing blow that takes them down, but they can keep shooting you whilst you're shooting them, much like enemies in a light gun shooter. You also have a flashing cross hit marker that can't be turned off. And some enemies, the bigger tankier ones, will even glow and flash white as you're hitting them with bullets. It feels exactly like the kind of game you play in an arcade, pumping coins into the machine. Now, perhaps that was Smilegate's intention. Perhaps they always set out to make that kind of arcadey light gun experience. But then market it as exactly that. Show us those HUD elements in the gameplay trailers. Because stripping them away and then selling us a game with them hard coded on feels completely deceptive and wrong. Okay, here we go. Got my gun. I don't know where my secondary is or even if I have a secondary. Okay, I've got a pistol on my right shoulder. Nothing on the left shoulder, but yeah, pistol on the right shoulder. Now, reloading in this game um, is kind of like a halfway house between Firewall Ultra and a game like Pavlov. You have to do some of it, but you don't do all of it. So right now, if I wanted to uh, change a clip, I press down here, L2, I get a clip. I don't know where my ammo counter is. It might be infinite. And then you can bring it to the gun, but then an animation kicks in. So that, that second part where he actually pushed it in, that was the game running and animation. I imagine it's the same for pistols. Um, yep, animation as well. And they seem to have kind of like a snap. So right now, I can just aim freely wherever I want. But if I bring it kind of close to look into the... Yeah. So if I want to look down that hollow site, it's now snapped to me. So you bring it there and it's kind of stuck to my shoulder. So what's the gameplay like? What's it like to actually play through the campaign of Crossfire Sierra Squad? Well, each of the campaign missions, of which there are 13, take around five to seven minutes to complete. You're dropped into exceptionally linear environments. These levels are basically just corridors. You can't go off the beaten track. You can't explore. If you try to explore, to try and find little secret rooms or objectives hidden away, you're met with a lot of invisible walls. You can't go wandering in this game, you have to follow the path that is set for you. Which makes it crazy to me that this game even feels the need to put the glowing yellow arrows on the floor that point you where you're supposed to go. It's not like you can get lost, there's only one way to walk in this game and that's forward until the end of the level. It would be literally impossible to not be able to find your way so why do we need the glowing yellow lines on the floor that completely break the immersion and break the way that this game could look it could look cool it could look gritty and it could look cinematic but it doesn't with all these arcade hud elements everywhere now once you're in the level the objectives are always the same kill all the enemies get to the end kill all the enemies Every now and then, you'll encounter an enemy that's a little bit chunkier and they might take a little bit longer to go down, but it's effectively a shooting gallery. You move through these corridors, through these linear levels, and each of them has maybe two slightly bigger arena sections, and in those areas, enemies pop up in pre-designated places, you shoot them down, and when they're all dead, the mission finishes. That's the gameplay loop of Crossfire Sierra Squad. There's nothing else to it. It's a shooting gallery. It's just clear the enemies out, move on to the next location. There aren't any set pieces. There's no cutscenes. There's no dramatic story beats. The story itself is 
inconsequential. I don't know who I am or who I'm fighting for. I don't know who my squad mates are and I don't know what the overarching threat is. It's presented in such a ham-fisted and shoddy way. I actually remarked that the dialogue in this game sounded like House of the Dead. And I love House of the Dead dialogue for what it is. It's meant to be schlocky, it's meant to be campy, it's meant to be silly. But in this game you can tell they're trying to be serious but it has that cheesy arcade vibe to it. I have no idea what's going on in the story. I've said like on Shooter a few times but it goes a little bit deeper than just shooting enemies until they're dead and you win. The AI of the enemies is also very very similar to what you would see in a game that you would play in an arcade. All of the enemies have a pre-designated spot that they're supposed to stand in and their objective seems to be to run to that spot and shoot you until you're dead or get shot until they're dead. Sometimes the enemies would run straight past me to get to their pre-designated spot to stand. Pause. Retry from checkpoint. Return to shooting range. Close. Is that is that it? That's all my options? That's everything. Okay, this is normal plus difficulty and I still have the yellow lines on the floor. Which means I'm still going to have... Find out more. Let oh. me know on a Are these baddies? Right now. Are these bad guys? Yep, yeah, okay. They're baddies. I, don't, I hate all the markers on them and stuff. I, I don't want any of that. Looks awful. Ow! Why did he punch me so far? We've got to be able to turn that stuff off, right? We have to be able to turn it off. Now, there are other enemies with slightly more complex pathing. Some enemies with shields will path straight towards the player. And the bigger, tankier enemies with hammers will also path straight towards you, swinging their hammer trying to hit you. But none of the enemies in this have any kind of complex AI. They don't have any kind of self-preservation. They're not going to go and search out for new cover. They're just going to lock into the space they've been told to stand and then switch between crouching and standing to take shots at you. That's about as complex as it is in this game. Now, whilst we're on the subject of gameplay, I have to talk about the gun mechanics. This is another VR game that opts for an automatic or animation-based reloading system. Now, unlike Firewall Ultra, you do have to grab a mag from your invisible waist harness. There's nothing there. You just grab down to your left or to your waist Press L2 and you will pull up a clip for your gun. Once you get that clip close enough to the gun, the game takes over and an animation starts and they slam the, the clip in and they reload the gun. So it's half manual, half automatic, but again, it pulls you out of the experience. If you were looking for a gritty, realistic shooter, that's not what you're getting here. In the context of a light gun arcadey shooter, it actually makes a lot of sense that this has automatic reloads. It works in the context of the game that it's trying to be, so in that way it's not really a negative, but I know people wanted manual reloads. And it's the same for every gun. Every gun has an animation when you get the clip close enough to the gun. You can physically throw grenades and heal yourself with your healing syringe, but outside of that there's nothing else really in the game that's interactive. The environments are completely static and completely non-interactive. A few of them will have a breakable item in them, maybe a board or a couple of bottles on a wall, that kind of stuff will break in firefights, but I haven't interacted physically with anything in the world throughout my playtime. At one point there was a cutscene or a moment at the end of a level where there was a button that needed to be pressed and I got all excited and went to press it and then an animation took over and pressed the button for me. That's the height of storytelling and the height of interactivity that this game has presented so far. This is an on-the-rails shooter without the on-the-rails aspect. The enemies have exceptionally low AI. They stand in one position and shoot you from there until they're dead. They'll also take a lot of bullets to die, much like an arcade game because it's designed to get you pumping coins in. You can hit them with a full clip of bullets from your assault rifle and they still might not die unless you're hitting headshots. You have unlimited ammo. There's no threat here because you're never going to run out of bullets. You can keep pulling clips from your waistband. It will never run out. Only the special weapons like rocket launcher and chain gun have a limited ammo pool. So there's no real worry about playing on even the highest difficulty setting because you are never going to run out of ammo. You're never going to be hard pressed to take down these enemies. They have exceptionally simple pathing. The environments are very static, painfully linear, 
and the missions themselves are very short at five to seven minutes long and there's 13 campaign missions <sighs> no real threat even like if you're about to die because you've got unlimited ammo like ammo is never going to run out you're never going to find yourself in a pinch you're never going to find yourself scrambling to look for a new gun to use because you just reload the one you've got because you're not going to run out of ammo. It's never going to happen. Do you want me to press... Oh, I get to press the button with an animation. That's cool. Pop off the lid. Pop off the lid. Okay, so content-wise, when you first load into Crossfire Sierra Squad, you might think it's actually a really healthy offering. There's a full campaign, which is 13 missions long, with five different difficulty settings. There's easy, normal, normal plus, hard, and devs couldn't clear it. Now I must say the devs couldn't clear it difficulty is charming. I like that naming convention and I will check that out to see how difficult it really is. Now I've been playing the campaign on hard and I finished nine of the 13 campaign driven missions in an hour and a half. So it's taken me a little bit longer because I've died on a few of them a few times. There were some pinch points where I was just dying and repeating, but the mission complete time for all of them minus deaths was around five to seven minutes. So you can probably clock this entire campaign in two hours. There's then also 50 squad based or multiplayer missions that can be played single player or with a friend. Now at the time of recording this, I've only played them on my own. I didn't know anyone else who had access that I could play with. I didn't even know if the servers were live to play that stuff, but I did play a few of them on my own and they play out exactly like the main campaign does. It's an arcade on the rails, but not on the rails, light gun shooter against smaller, more intense groups of enemies. These are smaller missions that are designed to be played with a friend. And I think there could be some fun in those. If you've got a friend with you, any game is elevated. Any game is more fun with a friend by your side. And I would like to check that out and I will reserve complete judgment until I've played that because I could find some fun in there. And there's a lot of those missions. There's like five pages of these missions and there's eight missions on each page. So there's a lot of content there and it would be quite replayable if you have fun with it. But if you didn't click with the gameplay loop of the main campaign, you won't click with it here because the AI is the same and the general flow of gameplay is the same here. Then to round out the content, there's also a horde mode, which currently has one map and two more coming soon. Not sure when they're coming, but there is a horde mode. So three different main modes with, so to its credit, a lot of missions to play through. Now you might be thinking, why only finish nine of the 13 campaign missions? Why not finish them all before sitting down and making this video? Well, the truth of the matter is this. I was bored to tears and I really struggled to get through even nine of the campaign missions. They're also similar. They feel like Groundhog Day. It feels like playing the same mission over and over again in a slightly different but still as linear environment as the last one. I really struggled to play as much as I did and I can't see myself going back to Crossfire except for to check out the co-op. I want to see if the co-op salvages it. So yes, there's a lot of content here on paper over 60 missions and a horde mode sounds like a lot, but the missions are very short, very linear. They don't offer much in the way of replayability because what are you really working towards? And they're not fun. And that's the cardinal sin that a game can commit. If it's not fun, if it's boring, why are you wasting your time with it? I think it's pretty crazy that they showed this game with none of like the hit markers and it looked kind of like a proper story driven COD campaign in VR um, and then you get to it and it's actually small arenas with very arcadey shooting with all these like hit markers and enemies that just run straight to a walled off location it's 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 actually cleverly deceptive marketing or I'm just an idiot and I've not been looking closely enough Okay, I just want to make one last point about the general presentation of the game, the visuals and the sound design before I wrap this one up because I appreciate it's probably running a little bit long now for a review. Now Crossfire Sierra Squad is a pretty good looking game. The textures are high quality, the lighting is nice enough, the resolution is high, it looks sharp. It's certainly not one of those blurry PSVR 2 games. I think based on visuals alone, it's not going to offend anyone. It's nice enough looking and the items in the environments that do break, break in a really nice chunky way. 
there's these mannequins on the shooting range and when you shoot at them they crumble away in the spot at which you shoot them and you can keep shooting until there's literally nothing left it's nice and it's satisfying but then when you get into the actual levels and you start really looking at it and spending some time in there you realize the game is completely devoid of any atmosphere these levels these environments they are 100 percent static there's only a few things in each level that break and fall apart when you shoot them. You cannot interact with anything. You can't put your hand on something and grab it. There's no dust rolling through, no dust particles. There's no wind, there's no breeze, the trees don't move. The cloth that's hanging around in some of the levels doesn't move. You can't hit into something and knock it over. There's no light beams coming through the windows when you go into indoors levels and it's sunny outside. There's nothing there to elevate the atmosphere. It feels like a backdrop, it doesn't feel like a real place, and all the items in there feel like set dressing rather than actual objects you can interact with, because you can't interact with them. So it is a pretty game, the gun models look nice, your hands are detailed enough, but it's so devoid of any atmosphere. And the same could be said for the sound design. The guns sound good enough, they sound chunky, they sound heavy, they sound impactful but it doesn't align well with what it's like to actually shoot an enemy. The enemies can take a ton of bullets. So there's a real disconnect between how heavy and chunky the guns sound and how it feels to actually shoot someone. But the gun sounds are probably the best part of the sound design in Crossfire Sierra Squad. The worst offenders are the music and the dialogue. The dialogue, as I've mentioned in this video already, is super cheesy. It's House of the Dead level cheese, and I like House of the Dead. I think House of the Dead is great, but in this instance where they're trying to play it straight and trying to play it seriously, it just doesn't land. It all sounds like military mumbo jumbo. It sounds like jargon. It doesn't really sound like it's trying to push a plot forward. I didn't know who any of the characters were, and they didn't do a good job of explaining what the threat is. And the music is this kind of weird, cheesy, distorted guitar rock that I guess is meant to be exciting and push you through the battles, but it just falls flat. Again, it feels like the kind of music that plays in an arcade game. At an arcade, where you're pumping coins in, and you can't really hear the music anyway because you're in an arcade and you can hear the noises of everything else. It's super forgettable and it just doesn't land. It doesn't hit its intended purpose. It doesn't make those firefights any more exciting. If anything, it makes them more annoying because you're hearing that same music kick in every single time you get into a fight. I guess that's basically all I have to say about Crossfire Sierra Squad. I went into this one expecting something very different to the product I got, and I think that's mainly because the trailers they presented stripped the game back. They removed all of those arcade elements. The trailers don't show the yellow lines on the floor. They don't show the hit markers or the health bars on the enemies. They make it look like a cinematic Call of Duty campaign style experience, but the reality is this is closer to a time crisis in VR game. And there's nothing wrong with that. I want time crisis in VR, but not when it's been marketed to me as something completely different. Now I don't set out to make negative videos, but in this case I really struggled to find the positives in Crossfire Sierra Squad. For those who have already bought it because the review embargo was 2pm and the game came out I think at midnight, so there's been a big period of time where people could pick up and play this game before reviewers could tell you what they thought about it, I hope you're finding enjoyment in it. I hope you're enjoying the product you got and I hope you don't feel as disappointed as me, but I do feel like there will be people out there who are disappointed by this game because it certainly doesn't align with the product they've shown in marketing materials. And I understand that the job of a trailer is to sell a game, but I would prefer a game developer to do that in an honest way and not in a disingenuous way by removing elements from the game that you cannot remove yourself when you're playing it. I tried everything to turn off all those arcadey HUD elements and I cannot find a way in any of the options. If you find it, let me know, but I have scoured it. I've been back to the game three times to check to make sure I'm not missing something and I haven't been able to find it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. For me, Crossfire Sierra Squad is a skip. It's, a, it's an avoid right now, unless you really do want an on-the-rails shooter without the on-the-rails aspect. 
Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, leave a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you soon for another one. Take care, guys.